Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss how do we check uh, the normality of a variable. Um, and uh, in the next video, what we are going to do is we are going to discuss the um, the assumptions of regressions. So, what why I'm uh, sharing this uh, because. Uh, Normally, I have seen that many people have misconception that uh, uh, checking the normality of a variable is a regression assumption. Uh, but let me clarify this: that um, uh, a, a dependent variable or an independent variable can be normal or non-normal. This the distribution cannot uh, necessarily be normal. Uh, for the reg regression assumption to be met. So normality of a variable is not a regression assumption, but normality of an error term uh, is the assumption of a regression and that must be uh, fulfilled. So in this video, we are not going to talk about the, the assumption of regression or the normality of the error term, but rather we are going to discuss the normality of a variable. So for that, let's uh, have some data. Uh, this time, uh, let's uh, let's use this uh, NLS eighty eight data set. We have used this data in our previous videos as well. Okay, so the first thing to uh, to graphically check the normality of uh, a variable is to uh, to use a histogram. We click on graphs, and then we we have histogram. And let's say this time we are going to check the normality of wage. So our data is continuous. This this wage variable is continuous. It is not uh, discrete. And uh, in, on y-axis we do not want density. Rather we want uh, frequency, right? And let's have some options here. Density plot. We we want density normality plot normal density and uh, also the kernel density, k density. Okay, so if we click submit, we would have this histogram, right? And uh, we know that it looks, it do not look normally distributed uh, data uh, because it is a wage data. And uh, in wages data, we have quite uh, it is normally positively skewed data. We have quite l less number of people who would have uh, uh, quite high hourly wage and uh, mostly would be uh, would be clubbed at the lower uh, wage per hour wage uh, area. So if I show you the command that uh, it had generated, it is the histogram, which is the command name, then the variable name, comma, we, we ask it to have frequency, if you remember it from here, then uh, we added a normality, uh, normal plot and a, a k density plot. So what k density plot is telling us is how the population data would look like uh, given our sample, right? Uh, and uh, now from this, graphically, we know that it is positively skewed data. Uh, let's do it for some other variable and see if we can have a variable. Let's do it for experience and see if we can have uh, a graph which is somewhat normal. So this graph looks uh, somewhat normal. This uh, this experience data is uh, somewhat normally distributed. <laughs> there is uh, one more uh, graphical method of uh, looking at it and that is called uh, hang root right uh, it is an um, user written command so we would have to do ssc install h-a-n-g-r-w-o-t root because i have already installed it <clears throat> so i do not need to uh, to reinstall it so uh, the command name is hang root and then we write the variable name so in this case let's use wage comma we use the bar option and what uh, this would tell us uh, so we are seeing a horizontal line over here so uh, the, the bar should touch the horizontal line right it should be near the horizontal line 
the far away they are to the horizontal line. Um, the uh, th that specific area is not normally distributed. So, so what I mean to say is, if you can see over here, the bar, uh, the the bars are, um, you know, uh, over the line. They have crossed the line. So, what this means is that uh, at this specific point, we have a more number of observations, uh, more people, uh, more uh, more subjects, uh, as supposed to if it was normally distributed data. And because these lines are not touching uh, or crossing the, the the horizontal line, so it is it means that we have uh, less number of people over here, right? So uh, so so as compared to the histogram, it would give us a somewhat better idea of how the data looks like. So at this point, we have uh, too many observations uh, at that specific value um, as compared to normal distribution. Okay, so this this was uh, a graphical representation of uh, of normality, but we know that graphical representation doesn't mean that it is uh, the data is statistically um, the normality assumption can or the sorry the the normality of the data can be tested. So for the test, we would have to use uh, certain, you know, um, uh, normality test. So in Stata, we have a bunch of normality tests. If you click on statistics, we would uh, find these normality tests over uh, distribution plot and test, and we have these tests. So we have skewness kurtosis test of normality, then we have shapiro wilk test and shapiro Franco test, right? So uh, let's use uh, SK test, right? The command is SK test, which stands for skewness kurtosis test. But before that, that let me let me also discuss one more thing. Let's uh, let's summarize this this variable of wage. Uh, sorry, summarize and now add the detail. So this is the detail option and it tells, it gives us the median value, the, the number of observations, the mean value. But over here, it would give us the skewness and kurtosis. So what skewness tells us that whether the, uh, the distribution is tilted toward one end. So if, if we, if you remember from the, uh, uh, from the, uh, distribution of uh, wages it was uh, tilted towards the right hand side so we we, we call this a um, a positively skewed uh, data right so skewness tells us uh, whether the distribution is tilted toward one direction in case of uh, income uh, income is positively skewed because we have lost of people uh, with uh, with low income but uh, quite less number of people with high income uh, negatively skewed would be exactly opposite to that. That means we would have a higher number of individuals at the right end of the, uh, the, the, the histogram as compared to the left end of the histogram. Uh, if, if you want to do compare it using the skewness value, then the skewness value should be equal to zero and zero would mean that um, uh, from the skewness perspective, the data is normally distributed. It is neither positively skewed, neither negatively skewed. Uh, now coming to kurtosis, uh, what kurtosis would uh, tell us that uh, it would tell us the thickness uh, of the tail of the distribution, right? Uh, so um, the a normally distributed data would have more observations in the middle and less observations uh, on the on the tail end. So, uh, so what we saw with the experience variable, we saw that we have uh, most observations in the middle and lesser observations at the at the extreme ends. Uh, so, if uh, the so let's compare the value of kurtosis. The uh, so the value of kurtosis. Uh, should be equal to three uh, for it to be normally distributed, right? For the for the data to be normally distributed, uh, a value less than three, uh, it would mean that um, uh, the the cases at extreme ends at the tail ends are higher, and the the cases at middle uh, are less, right? So we have 
uh, two flat uh, curve in the middle and we have uh, more observations at the at the at the extreme ends and the opposite would be if the value of kurtosis is greater than 3 that would mean that we have quite high number of observations in the middle as compared to uh, the extreme ends so if we can um, see the um, okay so so if i show you the kurtosis of this uh, this variable this this experience variable so that would be somewhere near 3 you can imagine that kurtosis is somewhere near 3 and uh, skewness is um, also closer to, to 0. So it is somewhat normally distributed. But with, uh, with the case of wage, we have, uh, um, you know, a higher kurtosis and uh, the, graph, uh, the graph looked like uh, that we have higher number of observations over here as compared to it had been if, uh, if the data was normally distributed. Now these values do give an idea but it is not a statistical test and uh, I just mentioned that for statistical test we would have to use a skewness kurtosis test or shapiro wilf test. So if you wanted to use uh, ASCII test uh, then we would just uh, select the variable in this case it is wage. Uh, okay and uh, we get the values right but here we uh, the the value that we are interested is is the probability but we do not get the value we just uh, are having a missing value for the the probability and the reason is that this value is quite small and uh, stata do not um, is going to report it over here but uh, let me do it for the experience variable and just to give you an idea so uh, now you see that uh, experience uh, for experience, uh, sorry, I selected two variables, but anyhow, just to make it simple. For experience, we have a probability value of uh, 0, um, 0.0, right? It would be either 0 0.000001, but uh, Stata only reports four decimal points after um, decimal. So what this means is the normality, the assumption over here is, the, sorry, the null hypothesis over here is that the data is normally distributed. The data of the experience is normally distributed. And when uh, when the when the value is less than 0 0.05, we, we reject the null hypothesis of normality and we can conclude that this experience data is not normally distributed. The same goes over here and if we do not get any value then uh, it means that it is quite a small value to be reported over here and again the uh, the value is less than 0 0.05 and the wage variable is also not normally distributed. Now with wage variable we can understand because graphically we uh, we got the idea that it is not normally distributed but with the experience variable why it is uh, saying that the data is not normally distributed but rather it actually is. Uh, from graphical perspective. Now the, the reason is that these normality tests, whether it is Shapiro-Wilk test or the skewness kurtosis test, they are quite uh, sensitive, right? Um, so in 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 uh, in in large uh, samples, uh, a small deviation from normality would lead to a um, for lead to a significant result that is normality as a uh, normality hypothesis being uh, rejected um, but we know that in large sample sizes the normality of a variable is not a uh, big uh, big issue right so in this case we have uh, 2200 observations and uh, it is a large data set and we can you know safely um, go with uh, with the analysis even if the data is not normally distributed uh, so this skewness kurtosis test or shapiro wilk test is uh, sensitive to sample size. In case of large sample, any small deviation would lead it to be significant. But in small sample sizes, uh, even a larger deviation from normality um, wouldn't make it significant, right? But in case of uh, small sample sizes, uh, the normality assumption, uh, the normality of the data of a variable is uh, more important okay so let's uh, also look at the the second test which is uh, a shapiro wilk test 
so we do it for wage and the command is <coughs> s -wilk and then the variable name so again it says that the variable is uh, not normally distributed okay i hope that it gives you some idea of what um, how do you check the normality of uh, a variable uh, in our next video we are going to discuss uh, the assumptions of uh, uh, regression and the normality assumption the multicollinearity assumption and the other assumptions that we have for the regression.